Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Midweek Update. It is such a joy to be with you this week. Pastor, how are you? I'm doing all right. It's so good to spend some time today uh, with some scripture and then get into our Midweek Update. Yeah, we do have a nice piece of scripture. Luke chapter 7. You want to read that for us? Sure. Week? We're right. in uh, Luke chapter 7, verses 36 to 50 today. One of the Pharisees asked Jesus to eat with him, and he went into the Pharisee's house and took his place at the table. And a woman in the city, who was a sinner, having learned that he was eating in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster jar of ointment. She stood behind him at his feet, weeping, and began to bathe his feet with her tears and to dry them with her hair. Then she continued kissing his feet and anointing them with the ointment. Now, when the Pharisee who had invited him saw it, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would have known who and what kind of woman this is who is touching him, that she is a sinner. Jesus spoke up and said to him, Simon, I have something to say to you. Teacher, he replied, speak. A certain creditor had two debtors. One owed 500 denarii, the other 50. When they could not pay, he canceled the debts for both of them. Now which of them will love him more? Simon answered, I suppose the one for whom he canceled the greater debt. And Jesus said to him, You have judged rightly. Then turning towards the woman, he said to Simon, Do you see she has bathed? Do you see this woman? I entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet, but she has bathed my feet with her tears and dried them with her hair. You gave me no kiss, but from the time I came in, she has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she has anointed my feet with ointment. Therefore I tell you, her sins, which were many, have been forgiven. Hence she has shown great love. But the one to whom little is forgiven loves little. Then he said to her, Your sins are forgiven. But those who were at the table with him began to say among themselves, Who is this who even forgives sins? And he said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Wow. Lots going on there. Mm -hmm. Tremendous piece of scripture. Let's start by setting the scene. Because some folks might be wondering or asking, How does this woman just all of a sudden show up at dinner? Right, at the dinner party. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, well, this is worth talking about. In our mind, right, dinner is about being at home in this private setting, in the dining room with the doors closed and maybe a window open, but it's your family. Right. This is not the case here. Wasn't in this time at all when one of these banquets were thrown. They were in some ways a very public occasion. Mm. Those honored guests would have been gathered around one central spot, but it was not uncommon to have onlookers then sort of gathered around the exterior wall or what have you, sort of perceiving what it is that was taking place with this particular group of folks. Yeah, they were trying to have an event, but they were showing off a little bit. Oh, you can see what we're doing, but you can't kind of just come in and know. That's exactly right. So it was all, that, that interplay between the private and the public was all a part of the equation. Yeah. So it makes sense then that this woman from the city makes her way to Jesus. And I think if the Pharisees, and I don't want to read too much into this, but if the Pharisees are, are willing to set Jesus up a bit, they probably would not have stopped her right away. Now, yeah. here's the other question. How does this woman just all of a sudden have access to Jesus' feet? Well, I think it's also... Good question. Right? It's also important to remember we have to get out of our minds this notion that everybody's at the table in their nice colonial wooden chair. Right. It's not the deal, right? Pillows on the ground, likely reclining on your left arm, eating with your right, okay. feet pointed away from the dining the area. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and so naturally, she could, just as the text describes, come up from behind and begin to tear up. Right. She starts to cry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so we kind of imagine... You know, you're at the table, everyone's chair, your legs are tucked under mm -hmm. there. Um, and so it would almost be an even, even, because this is a strange picture for Absolutely. us, an even stranger one of, 
you know, like when a kid needs to leave the table for the bathroom and they have to duck under, you know, at a crowded family dinner. And so they're in that awkward space <laughs> of right. being under the table. But no, this woman, she did have the access. Right. Um, and then in the treatment of your guests was really important, as Jesus goes on to say, too, with treating their feet and giving them a kiss and greeting them. Yeah, the Pharisees' welcome of Jesus was not all that enthusiastic. Yeah. We find out later on. However, the sinner, this mm -hmm. woman, uh, goes to great lengths to bathe his feet with her tears, but then also anoint his feet as well, which is no small matter. This is, this is kind of a big, really a big deal. Right. Um, it was not uncommon for someone to have their head anointed. We know that mm -hmm. uh, from other Bible stories. But the interesting thing here is that when this woman begins to anoint his feet, she assumes this position of servitude, which doesn't sound all that great until you realize that she really is sort of in the advanced placement class. Mm. It's not till much later on in the Gospels that Jesus invites his own disciples to wash one another's feet, and here she is, way ahead of the game, right. assuming this role of disciple, understanding what it is that Jesus has done for her. Yeah, yeah. very early on. Yeah. Right? Um, how about the little riddle? Do you guys, when you when you gather around as a family, right? Do you do you have family trivia night? You know, I can I say that we do. No. <laughs> when you go out to eat and you're waiting for your food to come, do you ever like get out the uh, riddle app? The and, riddle app. No. No, I mean every once in a while I might comment on like a quiz I took online. Okay. You know, which flower are you according to your pizza taste? But other than that, <laughs> well, the, yeah. the thing is, these little quizzes and riddles have been a part of the equation for a long, long time. And I love when Jesus gets challenged, mm -hmm. right? He takes some time at dinner there to pose a riddle, but in the form of a parable. Right. Uh, and what does it mean to be forgiven? Mm -hmm. And what does it mean to be forgiven much? I think this is also really, really important because here are all these folks sitting around in judgment mm -hmm. of this woman. And they say so clearly to Jesus, if you had any sense of who this actually was, and how deplorable she was, right? You would have never let her touch your feet. Right. Right. Yeah, and the fact that um, she has no name, she's just the woman who was a sinner. Right. And so that probably is, you know, from the writer, from the point of the Pharisees, there was just a woman, she was a sinner, and for those Pharisees it would have been, you know, unspeakable to Absolutely. talk to her, to treat her in any way with kindness. Yeah. Um, and then here we have Jesus who lets her touch him, mm -hmm. lets her serve him, um, and then enters into this dialogue on her behalf of this power of forgiveness. Right, yeah. right, it's beautiful stuff. Uh, and he says, too, I mean, a part of the lesson is uh, that, that not only is she gifted with this access to Jesus, but he insinuates that she's pretty much the only one that gets it, mm -hmm. that she understands what it is that she has been forgiven of, and her kindness to Jesus is a response to that extravagance. Right. The extravagance of the forgiveness meets the extravagance of her response. Yeah. Whereas Jesus says the Pharisees, as we said earlier, didn't do much at all to yeah. welcome him. Yeah, and so hospital. yeah, with his with his bit of a parable here, he's you know, the Pharisees I'm sure probably always thought they knew what was going on. They're very learned people, mm -hmm. they're intellectual, they were well respected in the community. Um, but here, Jesus isn't trying to trick them, but right. it is teaching them and showing them the error that they have, maybe in their thinking about who a prophet is, who Jesus is, and what it means to be a sinner and to be forgiven. Yeah, and that's a really important piece. They're testing to see whether or not Jesus is a prophet. Mm -hmm. He's clearly a prophet because he knows who's actually lacking in this moment, <laughs> right? But he's more than a prophet, just like you said. He's more yeah. than the prophet. He's also the Messiah because... Mm -hmm. He's the one that offers forgiveness, and as soon as he does that, that really piques their interest, and they yeah. say, hey, come on, this is this is a bit much, Jesus, but this, we know, is the identity mm -hmm. of our Lord, his fullest identity. So what do we take away from this? I mean, what are the big learnings? How does this touch our lives in the, in the current moment? Yeah, I think I've been thinking a lot about sin, okay. uh, especially as there's been a lot of uh, protests going on, a lot of uh, attention on this issue of race. Mm -hmm. And it's easy, I think, sometimes, uh, if it's kind of not in our backyard right. to ignore it. Yeah, um, it's true. But it's a systematic thing. 
it helps people uh, who aren't people of color get into uh, higher positions, there's different wages, and now we're seeing the killing of black men and women. Right. And that's something that as a white young woman, I find myself wanting to throw myself at the feet of Jesus mm. and ask for forgiveness. Okay. Because I think we're all, um, you know, a little bit responsible for how we act in this moment. And for some of us, it, we might not be the person who's ready to go out and protest, but we can be a person who donates to causes that are helping yeah. uh, fight racial injustice. We can be people who are learning a lot, mm -hmm. and we can say that we're, we're part of the problem. Um, I've benefited from racism. Right. Um, I have privilege. Yes. And now it's my job. This woman who is the sinner, she's been told she's the sinner, but she is also acknowledging that she does need forgiveness. Yeah. And I find myself these days acknowledging that I need forgiveness and I'm asking for it. And not only am I asking for it, but I want to put some some actions to my words. Yeah, that's so well said. Yeah. And, and really, repentance, we know. I mean, as we see the actions of this woman. Repentance is the gateway to a new start. Right. I mean, being honest about, having the courage to be honest about our shortcomings, and specifically connected with this conversation, mm -hmm. right? That's the way that we're gonna make a true step forward and make some progress in this situation, is to say, yeah, um, I'm accountable, I, I bear responsibility, mm -hmm. and I need to, to mend my ways. I need Absolutely. to correct my action and, and find another way forward. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I think Jesus ends with this saying to the woman, your faith has saved you, go in peace. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're trying to work towards together, is that going in peace. And right now we're, we're drawing attention to the issue of racism. Right. We're not trying to, um, you know, put kind of a quick band-aid on it, but are really looking at ourselves. How are we part of the problem? Um, how can we listen to voices that are trying to uh, get us to this moment of peace, but first we have to pay attention uh, to this moment where we're being shown that there's inequality and injustice. Right. Yeah. yeah. And that's, I mean, that's a beautiful thing to have a pathway to peace. And that peace that, that is spoken of here in the gospel is, is so much more than just the absence of conflict. Mm -hmm. It's fulfillment, it's wholeness in mind, body, and spirit, and not just for a select few but for all of God's children. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Good stuff. All right, should we pray together? Absolutely. All right. Let us pray. Oh God, where hearts are fearful and constricted, grant courage and hope. Where anxiety is infectious and widening, grant peace and reassurance. Where impossibilities close every door and window, grant imagination and resistance. Where distrust twists our thinking, grant healing and illumination. Where spirits are daunted and weakened, grant soaring wings and strength and dreams. All these things we ask in the name of Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Holy God, your children, our humanity is crying out right now, and we know that you hear us. Help us to hear voices that need our attention, and help us to work toward an everlasting peace by standing with those who are oppressed and who are working for justice. Holy God, we pray for all who are sick, all who are suffering, and all who grieve this day. In your name we pray, amen. God of justice, we remember before you those who suffer want and anxiety from lack of work. Guide the people of this land so to use our wealth and resources that all people may find suitable and fulfilling employment and receive just payment for their labor. We pray all of this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. All right. Thanks so much for that conversation, yes. Pastor Dan. I know it's not easy for us. It's not easy for no. folks at home. Um, but we have to have these conversations. It's definitely worthwhile. Yeah. And no better place to do it, right? right? Together and around Scripture, so it's perfect. Um, but I think it's time 
for the next phase of our program. Yeah, we're gonna move on to the midweek update. Sounds good to me. Okay, here we are back for the midweek update. It's good to be with you again. And of course, we're gonna return now to one of our famous top 10 lists. Oh, I love a good top 10. I have some good news, Pastor Ellen. This is all about some important stuff that's on its way. Go ahead. All right, this week we have the top 10 things Lutherans will do once we are in the green phase coming at you this Friday. This Friday. Number 10. Get those highlights done. Mm. My roots, terrible. Yeah. And they're just, they're really, really starting to show. <laughs> <laughs> Number nine, going to the swimming pool. But I'll be honest, I've had a really tough time choosing between my snorkel and my mask. Oh, yeah. Tough both, choice. Both are great fashion choices. They really are. Yeah. They really are. Good luck. Yeah. Yeah, good luck with that. All right, here we go. Number eight, heading to the ice cream stand. Mm where we will stand six feet apart for no less than two hours because everyone else is going to be there too. Of course. Popular space. Absolutely. Yeah. Number seven, take a nice long drive and pray fervently that those rest stops just aren't too crowded. Right on. Number six, take in a Pirates game. Never mind. Yeah. Just wishful thinking. Yeah, I know. I know you would be really looking forward to yeah, that. Yeah, what are you going to do? Yeah. Well, number five, you might have a meal at our favorite restaurant. And you'll have to do this with a reservation, a week in advance, and with lots of sanitation, Lysol on the utensils. Yeah, safety first. Safety first. No doubt about it. Number four, seeing our family without the need for a Zoom invite. Mm. Right? What a sight for sore eyes. That'll It'll be, be awesome. Yeah. Yes. Number three, looking forward to watching the Penguins win the Stanley Cup for the third time in as many years. Yes, that's, and yeah, pile them up. Records. Yes, yeah. It's, it's going to be awesome because it can't actually happen. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. yeah. I think it might. I think it might be good. Number two, church activities begin to resume. All right. All right. Slowly but surely. <laughs> Slowly but surely. Okay. And number one, the thing Lutherans are going to do once we are in the green phase, let's be honest, we're going to take away that 1,000 piece puzzle that's been sitting on our dining room table for the past three months because we're never going to finish it. Thank goodness that phase of our lives is finally over. Let's brush it off. <laughs> Clear off the table. <laughs> I love it. Good stuff. Thank you so much. And now, of course, this would not be a midweek update if we didn't have a little weather report. Let's go. All right. I am so excited to bring you this week's weather report. We're going to start out with tonight. And just for tonight and the next few days, oh, it's going to be so gloriously hot and warm. When you are outside, you'll just feel that nice warm temperature warming you up heart and soul. I don't really like the heat. But it will continue all the way through Thursday and Friday. And guess what? There will be moments of relief though, because just these lovely scattered clouds will come and go so that there will be moments where you have the shade, where you'll be able to sit and know that there is light coming, but also that you are protected by some cloud cover. Yeah, moments of shade, just moments, that's it. You know the heat's gonna come right back. Right, and then, with those moments comes other changes. And with a beautiful change, we will have some rain. But rain is so important. Don't you want that corn knee high by the 4th of July? We are planting, we are growing, gardens are bursting forth, and it's all because of our weekend forecast of scattered showers. But be safe too, there are some thunderstorms coming. Let's just be honest, nobody likes change especially Lutherans. 
and starting out next week, the sun will come back. There's always something to look forward to. Yeah, we're really looking forward to more sun. Sunburn, peeling skin, slathering on the old sunscreen. Sun care is important. Protect all of those layers. Go outside when you're able. Hydrate. <laughs> That's the weather. Woohoo! Thanks so much for being with us today. It is always a wonderful opportunity to look at scripture, see how it is interplaying and guiding us in our life, to have some time to pray together. Yes, and always. Then, oh, what a good top 10 list. And Yeah, get yeah. ready for the green phase. Yeah. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. Oh, whoa. Wow. Uh, sorry, I usually don't take any messages during uh, the update, but... That is a lot of exclamation points. Yeah, I just got Oof. something too. Oh. Hmm. Oh. Do you want to share the news? Yeah, in all capital letters. Well, folks, uh, this seems to be the last midweek update. Uh, our producers, our directors, our sponsors, our viewers, and even, oh non-viewers and agree it's it's time to end our series the statement goes on to say that due to many factors but most importantly including and i quote the most inaccurate weather reports ever produced i think that's a bit harsh it's, it's a little it feels a little harsh but yeah well, well all good things come to an end i guess i guess so so we will not be with you next week for the midweek update. It is coming to a close. This is it. Yeah. Yeah. But you can find us somewhere else next week. Yeah, next week, next Wednesday, Wednesday, six thirty, we will be at what I like to call the Latrobe. Some people call Latro, but I call Latro Shelter at North Park, just down from the boathouse, for our first official but safely distanced. Mm -hmm. Fit Church of this summer. Should be great to be together and see some of our church programming resume in person. Yeah, it'll be so great to be together. Please remember to bring your mask uh, and wear it as we are socially distancing at North Park. But that's great. Next yes. Wednesday, 6.30. Little exercise, little conversation, little devotion. Not unlike the midweek update in Absolutely. some ways. Yeah. So thanks so much for all your support, everybody. This has been great. It's been a lot of fun. And we're grateful for all your time and attention. God bless you all. I'm blessed. Have a good rest of the evening.